Um, my name's Eric, and um, I've been working on web apps for a while. Mostly, a lot of work lately has been on Double Map. If you don't know already, it's the system to track where all the IU buses are in real time here, and um, also at other places now. And I just want to say, like, it was hard trying to decide what to include and what not to. Um, a lot of things I probably just skim over or leave out. But if you want to hear about something, just you know, raise your hand and ask a question. And we'll see how much we can get to in 25 minutes. So let's talk about web apps. Um, first of all, who in here has made a website? Yeah, that's great. Now, how many of you have actually done like server-side programming for your website? And things like PHP, Python, Ruby on Rails. OK, OK. So this talk is going to be mostly about how, not necessarily just how to program things, or, but more about how to make your website so that it can handle a lot of traffic. Because that's all something we like, right? A lot of people come to our website, and we feel great, we're popular. But if your server setup can't handle it, then and your website gets posted to you know, Slashdot or Reddit or something, everybody's just going to you know, see a blank page or an error message or something. But to start with, let's get an idea about how big website traffic gets. So everybody knows powers of pen, right? I don't <laughs> OK. So pen to zero, this, this is a website that gets um, one zip hits a day. And maybe like, you know, your web page, right? So you have your, <laughs> you have your, you know, resume and you know your name, and you go to IU and your email address, and maybe you have this hosted on like the IU web server, like Mercury, or something like that. Um, website that gets tens of hits a day. Um, I don't know, like maybe your Tumblr, right? Again, this is shared hosting. Your Tumblr is just sitting on a server with everybody else's data, and. Um, you know, it's just one small piece of like a gigantic system. Tumblr runs everything, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. Um, hundreds of hits. Um, in high school, I made a couple websites that were really niche resource websites. Um, so resources, tools for um, very specific topics. I haven't touched those, but those get about 200, 300 hits a day. And, um, oh, by the way, when I say hits in this scale, I try to refer to page views. Um, counting it can get kind of like um, you know, fuzzy, but page view is when a user loads your page in a browser that's one page view. You know, not like counting every image that's loaded or every script that's loaded. Um, so again, this is shared hosting still. Um, a drop in the bucket for most shared hosts. Hundreds of webs or hundreds of page views a day is nothing. And we'll see that. Um, double map, as far as page views, we get 3,000 um, on weekdays. Nobody rides the bus on weekends. Mm -hmm. But this number doesn't also, doesn't take into account the amount of um, data requests we get. So if you counted the data requests, it would probably be like 10 times this number. But that's true of a lot of websites. Um, I, it was hard finding a website that got tens of thousands of hits per day that people would recognize. Um, the Vatican says they do. I don't really believe them, but we'll just go with that. <coughs> um, hundreds of thousands of hits. The Herald Times Online, they get more than 100,000 on weekdays. They get slightly less on weekends, right? Um, maybe just like 80, 90, or 800, 800 900, or sorry. 80, 90,000 on the weekends. Um, Stack Overflow, which everybody in here knows and loves Stack Overflow, right? Yeah. Stack Overflow, and this is not counting the other Stack Exchange sites, it's um, 6 million hits a day. And again, this kind of varies between weekdays and weekends. Um, going up another power of 10, Reddit, 70 million hits a day. They've been growing like crazy. Tumblr, 500 million page views a day with four engineers running things. That's pretty impressive. YouTube. YouTube says they get four billion videos viewed per day. And if you think about it, one video can be, you know, hundreds of thousands of times the size of a web page. 
Um, next, Facebook. Facebook was hard to get numbers, like page view numbers for. Um, they said they got 100 billion hits a day in July 2010. Um, I think they were talking about just like any request to the server. And with Facebook, it's kind of hard to differentiate what's a page view and what's just like a hit. It's clicking on a button, a hit, I don't know. Um, the web, I, I, I am not really sure about this number, but um, we do know that more than 2 billion people in this world use the internet regularly. So that's good. Now, the stuff I'll talk about will mostly get you um, maybe like halfway down this chart. Because once you start getting into like this kind of stack overflow, millions of hits per day, you have enough money to, you know, buy a bunch of engineers and have them custom design your system. Um, once you get past like something like, um, I'd say once you get past like something like Tumblr, then you're getting into the territory where you want to run your own data centers and, well, good luck. <laughs> so, how do we get our web page on the internet? Well, I mean, shared hosting is like the thing that everybody and their dog has, you know? <laughs> you pay like a few bucks a month to DreamHost, one in one HostGator. Um, there's like a million different companies that for a few dollars a month, they promise you stuff like unlimited bandwidth, unlimited disk space, you know, unlimited this and that, and you kind of wonder how they make money, but they know the vast majority of people on a shared hosting plan won't use the five dollars a month that they pay for. You know, when you're getting ones of hits per day, you know, that's basically free to them. Um, but if you want to write a web app, um, you want to go beyond something like shared hosting because a lot of shared hosts shared hosts, they let you put some, maybe some PHP scripts and your HTML files, but it's tough to have a whole application that needs a lot of features that they might not be willing to offer you. So we're getting to things, um, managed platforms are really interesting. Heroku, um, Windows User, Google App Engine, this is, you know, all the promises of the cloud, right? You write your web app, and you write it to Google specs or um, Heroku specifications. You just put it on there. They handle everything else. All the scaling, you know, if you suddenly get a huge spike of traffic, you don't even have to worry about that until you know, the next day. The thing with this is they handle everything, all of the server stuff, um, the databases. You don't even necessarily know how many servers your app's running on or what your database machines are like, none of that stuff. It's just, you hit a button and it just works like magic. Now, the downsides are, well, number one, it's expensive. Google App Engine, Heroku, they offer free plans, like little free plans to get you kind of hooked. And then once you do get traffic, they'll charge you as much as they want because they know, number two, that it's hard to move away from one of these. If you write an app to use a lot of App Engine specific features or a lot of you know Heroku specific features, if you want to move to your own servers or to another company, those are features that you're going to have to rewrite in some form or another. Um, Amazon is kind of in between um, these kind of managed hosts and things like um, just running your own servers because you can get um, on their EC2 cloud, you can just get lots of servers, um, put Linux on them, you run what you want. But they also have their own um, database providers, their own file systems, their own cloud um, NoSQL service, um, their own cloud load balancer, their own cloud you know, content distribution network. Um, so again, that's, it's a lot more flexible, but you can still get into, um, you know, using proprietary systems that you can't get elsewhere. So VPS, um, VPS stands for Virtual Private Servers, and this is great for people who want all the flexibility of just a Linux server, but they don't want you know, to pay thousands of dollars for a machine or whatever. There are companies that will take these powerful machines and put virtual machines on them, like the kind you, um, like VirtualBox, 
not the same thing, but still the same idea. It's a lot of servers inside one physical machine. The problem with this is you have neighbors on your server, and if your neighbors start using a lot of you know, disk I.O. or using a lot of CPU, that might slow you down, even though you can't see or know exactly what they're up to. Um, dedicated servers, companies will have machines in data centers, they'll put your name on one, that's yours. Um, not very flexible, like if you need to machine power cycle because you totally you know, messed it up, you have to send a support ticket for somebody to walk down the aisle and go up to your machine and you know, physically power cycle it. But still, you don't have to worry about the hardware, that's all theirs, um, and it can be good if you need a lot of power. Co-location, co -location, you buy your own machines, put it in a data center somewhere, pay them for power and that bandwidth and air conditioning, all that. Your own, your own data center, um, I mean, you'll do this if you're Facebook or Google, most other people, probably not. So, back to web apps. A lot of people get into this mentality that, you know, once you know some HTML and CSS, you just learn a few PHP-like functions and all of a sudden you're making web apps. But when you're designing a web app, you have to think about the whole thing from head to tail as an application. And it's more like if you were a software developer who learned some web things and became a web app developer. So, um, there are lots of tutorials online to tell you how to set up like PHP on your Ubuntu machine and all that. And um, they tell you to do something like this. And it's all fine if you're just trying to set up a development machine, maybe. But something like this will not scale. If you start getting a lot of traffic to a website that you set up based on one of those tutorials, you'll, you'll run out of memory, your machine will crash, bad things will happen. And let's look at why. Um, usually they tell you to use Apache with um, MySQL and PHP, the, the typical like LAMP, right? LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Mod PHP bundles the entire PHP binary into the Apache process, basically. You get good performance because you don't have to load PHP all over again every time you want to run a page. But it's a lot of memory. And when your server is forking every time to handle a simultaneous connection, if you've taken operating systems, you'll know that forking is expensive. You'll run out of memory really quickly. And when you're trying to scale a web application, memory is the most important thing that you can take advantage of. Um, and memory is important because let's say you have some kind of like, you know, social, local, um, viral set website with like user <laughs> accounts and stuff. If you have to go to the hard drive to fetch, you know, user 1's profile and user 5,000's comments and user 26,000's like latest friend requests or whatever, it's going to be really slow, and the database here is going to be the problem. Um, you know, people complain about PHP being slow, but the time spent actually executing PHP is usually trivial compared to the time for all those database queries. You know, when you load, like think about it, if you load a Facebook page, how many times does it have to go to the database to fetch like your friends, your friends' pictures, your latest you know, friend requests, all the things that people keep, you know, sending you, like notifications about. <coughs> so, when you're scaling web apps, it turns into this game of like, let's keep as much of our data in memory as we can. Um, so, if you keep, like, if you have a website that's just a lot of text, um, blog posts, and comments and profiles and things like that, there's a good chance you can get enough RAM to fit all of your data in RAM. And that way, you don't have to go to the disk to read anything. You can just fetch it straight from RAM 
It's super fast. That's how all these websites like Tumblr and things like that are getting good performance. They try to squeeze as much performance as they can out of their machines. And if it means just, you know, buying $4,000 of RAM, that's like nothing to them. So, um, again, make good choices about um, what you use. Right now we're using the threaded version of Apache, so we're not forking every time. We're using fast CGI with PHP, kind of separate our application from the actual web server. And um, we allocate most of our RAM to the database. Right. And so if you do get into the situation where you need to grow beyond one server, <coughs> your application servers, the ones running like your Ruby on Rails app or whatever, those are easy to scale. You just get like two or five or 10 of them. They're all doing the same thing. But databases are not nearly as easy to scale. Um, you you want to keep your database on one machine as long as you can. Because when, when you want to split up your database into several machines, like how would you even do that? Do you put like all the odd number users on one database and all the even number users on another? Do you like put the comments on one and put the, you know, social links on another server, like, it's a hard problem. <coughs> so the model for this kind of like mid-stage scale is your web servers scale horizontally. You just get lots of web servers. They all do the same thing. Your databases scale vertically. That means you get lots of RAM for your databases. Keep as much of your data in RAM as possible. You get fast CPU because it turns out that when your database is getting most of its stuff from RAM. CPU really matters. Um, a twice as fast CPU can get you twice as fast performance in a lot of cases. Um, fast disks, if you do need to go to disk, you want that latency as low as possible. So solid state drives are, um, or like large RAID arrays are kind of the choice for those, things like that. And, um, and then also eliminate as much redundant work as you um, if you have to generate somebody's profile page, do it once, save it in memory if you can, and that way every time for like the next you know, minute or five minutes or whatever, you can just get it straight out of memory. You don't have to do that regeneration. So Stack, um, stack Exchange is kind of um, good because they offer a lot of info, info about how they're doing things. And, um, so this is this diagram on the right is the Stack Exchange architecture today. They have ten web servers that handle all of your, you know, all the logic behind the application, and two really powerful database servers. And they're lucky because they can just split up their websites. Stack Overflow is by itself on one machine, and um, all their other little websites like the math stack exchange, the physics stack exchange, they can put those on different machines if they want. Um, and again, lots of RAM. Each database server has 64 gigs of RAM. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they added more to expand it to 120A or more. Because they even said this, the cost of RAM, $4,000 of RAM, um, is trivial compared to the amount of money they pay for SQL server licenses. And I saw that and I was like, kind of sad because if the price of your database software is affecting how you're scaling things, like, it's, it's not really a choice that I want to have to make. But yeah, SQL Server is um, expensive compared to just buying 128 gigs of RAM, putting it in a machine. All of a sudden, you have a lightning fast database server. All right. And other, other little things you can do, um, static content, images, CSS, a lot of JavaScript. You can put that on another server that just handles those things. That's really easy to do. Um, take advantage of a content delivery network. There are two services right now that will, for free, keep a lot of static content on their servers so that when people go to your website, they get a lot of this stuff from servers that are close to them. 
If they're in Europe, they'll get it from a European server. If they're in Asia, they'll get it from an Asian server. That will make the website faster. Um, Cloudflare is free. Google um, HD service is free for now. Um, cache and compile your application code. Again, usually the application code isn't the problem. But you can do things like for PHP, cache the opcodes that it generates. Um, oh, I don't have it on here. If you're using Ruby, you can use JRuby to run it on the Java virtual machine. Um, Facebook, they wrote their own PHP compiler, and I would not ever want to be in a position to have to do that. And um, stress test your server so you can know where its limits are and set them appropriately. Um, there's a Unix program called Siege. On most distributions, you can just app get install Siege, test it, um, it'll hit your server hard. And uh, of course, know what's happening on your website. If you don't know how many people are coming to your website, where they're going, things like that, you can't really make informed decisions. So, Quantcast um, and Google Anal Analytics are two of the most popular um, analytics software. They'll tell you how many people are coming to your website, where they're coming from, how they're getting there, you know, what they're looking at. Kingdom is a website that will just um, test your server, let you know if anything goes wrong, like every five minutes. And um, yeah, but things to kind of take away from just how to make a website scale is um, try not to make choices that you'll regret later. Because it can be hard if you do your design wrong in the beginning to add features to make it scale later, you'll start doing things like, well, I'd love to cache these things, but the way I wrote the app doesn't really let me do that easily, and I have to rewrite it, and let's just not do it. Right? Um, database is almost always the bottleneck. Pay attention to your database. Um, take time to optimize it. There's a lot of settings for MySQL and things like that. And um, take advantage of RAM. Again, RAM is fast, hard drives are slow. If you can fit your entire database in your RAM, then do it. You know? And um, if your web server is like hogging up a lot of RAM, get a different web server. RAM is precious, and nowadays it's pretty affordable. So, yeah, for anybody who wants to make a website, who wants to get it popular, handle a lot of traffic, um, I hope this kind of run through explanation gave you a little bit to think about. And um, I hope that you'll have a really popular website. Let's give a round of applause for it. So, um, Wilbur is going to just talk uh, next. Questions? Uh,